Now, one of the things I have talked about in the past, if a society is to cohere, if you are to have a coherent functioning society, one of the preconditions for a highly functioning, rational, coherent society is that there are truths that are sacred to the members of that given body, to the collective. There are sacred truths. All societies have them. And to the people of that society, those, those truths are self-evident. We have them here in the United States of America. And whether they came out of the Bible or not, up for, up for debate. But what isn't up for debate is that there are a body of sacred truths and sacred principles that we have, you know, built our society around for hundreds of years. As it said in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That's the key. These are non-negotiable truths. That's what makes them sacred truths. Sacred is another way for saying non-negotiable, not up for debate, self-evident. All the members of the society say, this is a value that we all can agree upon. And if a society starts to falter in its assessment of those sacred truths, if those, start to be, those non-negotiables start to become negotiable, that's the beginning stage of anarchy. That is the beginning stage of incoherence. And I'm not talking fun anarchy like, you know, I am an anarchist. I'm not talking fun, cool anarchy. I'm talking anarchy, anarchy. Riot in the streets anarchy. You know. Not enough to feed your family anarchy. Bad anarchy. Not fun anarchy. Not, not cool anarchy. Not the clash. It's the beginning stage of anarchy. You can see the beginning stages of it already happening here in the United States. Now, we haven't reached critical mass here. Despite what alarmists think. We aren't even close. But you already see it with something like free speech. Free speech is a sacred truth. Free speech is something that we, as a collective people, we the American people, have always held to be sacred, self-evident why, why free speech is important, need not be defended. It's a sacred principle of American society, freedom of speech, written right into, you know, written right into the beginning. But you see its breakdown. This is where I'm going with this. If you, are, if you watch, if you pay attention to certain segments of the news today, free speech is under fire all the time. Why? Because there are a group of people, most importantly why is because in our universities they are, they are not teaching an up-and-coming group of people who are going to be the custodians of the new society the actual value of free speech. Free speech is a sacred principle is becoming negotiable. It is no longer self-evident. It is no longer non-negotiable. What's starting to become more important to different members of our society is, you know, respecting the feelings of oppressed minorities. That's becoming a replacement sacred truth. You see it all the time in the discussions. People will say stuff about, you know, well... Facebook has the right to take whoever, I forget who they banned, Alex Jones off, because it's a private company. You, you're, they're, you're missing the whole point. First of all, it's a private company that owns the entire discourse of Facebook. If you're talking about YouTube, it's the only game in town. So it's really scary that they have reserved unto themselves the right to censor at will, based on vague ideas of hate speech. Who decides what's hateful speech and who doesn't? And if, you, the, if you're an atheist listening to this, you don't think you're going to be on the end of some of those channel deletes, think again. You start criticizing Islam too stridently, too intensely, too aggressively, bang, hate speech. There goes your channel. There goes you. You're going to be on the receiving end of some of that censoring impulse. So I wouldn't get too proud of it. But more importantly, it isn't just about a private company. That's devaluing the actual principle of free speech. Free speech is a principle. It is a sacred principle. Wherein if you don't value free speech above everything else, you don't really care about the free expression of ideas. And what you find more important than the free expression of ideas, you're starting to find other truths more important. Is it possible to belittle a minority group or an oppressed minority? Sure. 
Is it nice? Is it good? Is it the right thing to do? No. Does it need to be censored? No. No. That's dangerous. Why? Because it's not more important than free speech. Protecting the feelings of a certain group, no matter how oppressed or marginalized, is not more important than free speech. See, we aren't teaching the sacredness of the principle itself. That's why people make start hedging on it. Well, it's a private company. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Why? Because it's the principle. Free expression is something that we should be cultivating all the time. Free speech is the, is the only way we can have the free flow of ideas. The free flow of ideas is the only path to actual knowledge and learning. It's the only path to inclusion. Ultimately, if you start limiting the things that people are allowed to say or not say, officially limiting, you are devaluing the principle of free speech. And ultimately, that is going to lead to a form of anarchy. Because that sacred principle is up for grabs. And there are groups of people who think the sacred principle itself is the problem. It's really easy to start making a different mental calculation. Well, I don't want people to say bad things about the homosexual community. I've, that, that hurts me when they do. So I'm not so sure free speech itself is so great. That's what people are starting to talk. That's how people are actually starting to talk. United States of America in universities. Why? Because they're stupid kids, one, and they haven't been taught the, un, the absolute importance of free speech. It's no longer being translated down through the generations how important that sacred truth is. That's the only thing I'm talking about. People don't care about it in the up-and-coming generations the way they used to. Other truths are starting to replace it as more important and more sacred and more meaningful. Is it true that there is such a thing as oppressed minorities? Sure. Is it true that people sometimes talk dismissively and disrespectfully about them? Yes. Those truths are starting to become more important to a group of people who are coming up to run our society. That's the, the idea that those marginalized communities need to be protected from insult has become more important to them than the actual principle of free speech. And that is the beginning stages of anarchy. Now, like I said, it hasn't reached critical mass. Most of the people fighting over this are in the final analysis stupid kids. But that doesn't mean the, the principle itself has become devalued in our society because it has. And that, my friends, is the beginning of anarchy. And like I said, not fun, cool anarchy. Not fun, Ramon's anarchy. Evil, destructive anarchy. Where we go to war one with another over principles that we used to see as self-evident. And we used to all understand why it was important and why it was so, so special and why it was important, valuable. That has become up for grabs. That has become negotiable. And that's just what's happening. That's all for now. Amen.